Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. I'm Uncle Warren. And Uncle Warren has brought an embarrassment of riches to the Kayfabe Studios today. If you're new to the channel, we have about 1,500 videos up there to date as of uh, this video going live. We might have talked about your favorite comics. Uh, one way to find out is go to the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel, hit the magnifying glass, search for your favorites, and if we uh, check, talked about your favorite comics, check out those episodes. We have uh, gotten popular over the past uh, year or two, and uh, the comics that we talk about, they disappear on the aftermarket pretty fast. Uh, this will probably be an example of that once uh, this video goes live. The way to mitigate what we call the kayfabe effect is to become a supporter on the Patreon. You get videos before anybody else, and if you're a king kayfaber, you get all the videos before anybody else. Plus, you have access to the live stream recording sessions where we are uh, recording these videos. And without further ado, let's take a look at these Tomorrow's public Publications monographs on some of the great kind of Silver Age artists of your uh, and uh, one of the noteworthy things, well, Warren, why don't you tell us what some of the noteworthy things that, that come along with these packages here? Well, uh, back around in the, the late aughts, like around 2010, if you were on tomorrow's email lists, you would get an email saying, hey, Carmen Infantino book is going to come out. Here are four characters that he did. Give us a list of, you know, the top three characters you want. And for, I forgot what the money was, 100, 150 bucks, somewhere in there they would send you the book with a really nice sketch in it. And so, being the collector that I was, these are the ones I got. I have no idea if there were more than these, but these are the ones that I was that I was aware of that I got the emails for. So each of these has a really nice, in some cases, really, really nice sketch done by each of these famous cartoonists. And what's nice about these books, if people don't know Tomorrow's, they're great interviews. Yes, uh, they're very fabulous. comprehensive. This guy, uh, uh, Jim Amash, did a fabulous job with each and every one of these people in terms of getting an interview about their entire career. And you really get a feel about what it was like, what these people went through to get their career at whatever, you know, whether it was Marvel or DC, in some cases both. Uh, uh, and, and there's a ton of great information in here. Infantino in particular, which to me was very interesting because he was also a Golden Age artist. Right. Okay. The thing that interests me interests me in him is is uh, he you know he's publisher of DC Comics and then I I guess the implosion sort of goes down something something happens I mean Jeanette Con becomes publisher and then he becomes just a job guy at Marvel yes. drawing on you know Nova Comics and things like that I mean, like how the mighty have fallen kind yeah. of thing right uh, so. What you're saying is when I open these covers, That's right. I, I might get to see a drawing, you are, an you original. Are, you are going to see an original drawing. This video is brought to you by the books that Ed Piscor and I make. Coming out this November, Street Angel Princess of Poverty from Image Comics joins Street Angel Deadly Scroll Live to complete my Street Angel collection. Hulk Grand Design, available where better comic books are bought and sold but running out. So pick that one up if you haven't already. And my self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, 1986 Zine, and BW Zine will be available on JimRug.com October 26th. Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, will be out in October. Pre-order that one if you haven't already. Put your name on a copy before it is gone. X-Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor will be collected. All three volumes in one trade paperback in time for the holiday season. That's another one to pre-order. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Paperback. And Red Room, Trigger Warnings, Anti-Social Network, and coming very soon, Crypto Killers. Pick these up wherever you buy comics. And now back to our video. So, famously known for his uh, Adam Strange contributions. It, it was and easy. so you chose this? Yeah, so, I, so number one for this was the Golden Age Flash. Yeah. And this was number two. You, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a pulp, you know, I like this pulpy stuff. And I always loved Adam Strange. Um, I, in fact, I have like ten of his comics uh, from Mystery in Space. Love the whole thing. I love the way Infantino did his his skylines and his futuristic stuff. I love the clean lines that he was doing. So to me it was Adam it was either Adam Strange or Golden Age Flash. That's fun. I love seeing these guys wield a pencil too. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's a quick sketch, but also like you just don't see you know, he's not putting construction lines on there and it looks great. 
and it's not that over rendered stuff that we grew up looking at Ed. whenever we would see pencils you know we would see like all the crosshatch lines are drawn yeah. in this case it's just the guy that, that knows how to draw this character it's cartooning Put, yes. putting in these big bolds you know going over and like oh you know coloring that the sort of outer line to give you a little something extra interesting to note that there's some erasing there yes you know like yes. it's not yeah. just the dashed out thing either right all right, right and uh that unmistakable yeah. logo yeah, it's like I said. So when, of course, when I got these, I was like, "This is great!" <laughs> and so I tried to get all of them. And th these are really nice monographs because they 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 also reproduce a lot of artwork over the entire career. You know, b back I, here, I had no idea that he was a strip guy uh, to start. Yeah. And you know, back here, even the obscure stuff like Re Detective Chimp and Rex the Wonder Dog. I mean, even to see those comic books is rare, no less to. Right to see this stuff. I saw and that of one course, before. and by the way, one day I would love to do this issue with you guys. You have it? Uh, I I used to. Sorry, but th this to me is this is the genesis point of all of the multiverse stuff. No matter what you, no matter what multiverse a thing is out there, including Luther Arkwright, which we're going to do. This is where it started. The Flash of Two Worlds, and yeah. that to me is a critical book. I love these. There was a race like this when I was early early days of reading. There was an issue yeah. that came out, and it was the Flash Superman race. And man, I'll, I'll probably track that one down one of these days to reread. There, there was one in Superman and one in Flash. They did two of them, written by uh, Jim Shooter. Yeah. Oh wow. As a as I a kid, right? That. Like yeah. it's it's the perfect like child idea, right? Who it's who, great. who would win Absolutely. in a race, right? Like, like perfect sense. Yeah, these are nice books, and you know we could sing the praises of Tomorrow's Forever. Like they're yeah. constantly putting out books that just chronicle history of, of mostly of like the mainstream comic books sure but it's still history that we need like uh john cook put out or wrote a book about charlton history last year was published and it's like these companies they tend to disappear you know yes. marvel and dc aren't talking about the history of charlton so right thankfully tomorrow's is and to the kayfabe audience uh these books are in short supply uh you know i don't imagine there's more than maybe five thousand copies of a, a lot of these books that uh tomorrow's puts out so uh, it might behoove you to be on that mailing list to see what uh, Tomorrow's is putting out and to jump on the titles that, that you want ASAP. Sabusema. What's cool about this is it looks like exactly how the uh, Sabusema of like the 90s era Spideys that he did where, where um, Sienkiewicz was, was doing an inking on top of him. Like he took no shorts on that. It's really fantastic seeing how confident he is with those pencil strokes because it isn't drawing every line and cross hatching, but it almost looks inked because of the, yeah. the heaviness of the pencils on one side as he's like yes. just dashing those lines out. I love this sketch. I think it's it's uh, really a nice sketch. And this one's tipped in there. Yeah, some of them are tipped in and some of them are loose. And and, and this was another one, uh, Sal Buscema, and they give a whole, yeah, his fashion stuff. I mean, it's uh, his advertising stuff, I should say. Uh, and and there are parts of everybody's history that you don't know, like right. Carmen Fantino doing comic strip stuff. Yeah. Okay, who knew? It looks like a uh, bulk of his career is at Marvel. Yes, and there is a point in time when when you go through the the sort of uh, bibliography, he might have been doing four books a, a month. Like he he, I think he drew more Marvel pages than Kirby did. He was fast, reliable, and you know. I, I I liked a lot of the stuff that he did, so... His Hulk stuff, whenever I reread the Hulk for Hulk Grand Design, that was the big revelation to me, was like, oh, this is the dude. Like, like yeah, this sure. is kind of the Hulk. When I think of the Hulk, I'm thinking of Sal Buscema's as Hulk. Yeah. Man, fun to see what his more late period stuff is looking like. Mm -hmm. These kind of commissions and stuff, seeing, seeing where his drawing is at. And I think, man, even... Um, I remember, like, he, he... Believe it or not, he was shopping a book that, that might have been a Fantagraphics book. You know, but Fantagraphics didn't publish it, but like it was, it was being shopped over there. I, I have this issue. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Yeah, oh, there. Let, let me see him drawing these X Men. It's it was always uh, a, a, a treat to see the the old timers drawing that the post Jim Lee X Men and seeing seeing what they were doing. And you could see he's manipulating his marks, like trying to imagine what the kids of today are are responding to. I wonder when that's from, because I think Marvel Editorial was pushing guys in that direction, yeah, too. Yeah, they were. 94. So yeah. th this would be the era where... Um, <laughs> the new house style was image. Yeah, huh? <laughs> where it was Jim Lee, where Herb Trimpey was 
did that Fantastic Four comic, or or there's the Bishop backup story in that one annual. These would show up in annuals and stuff. Yeah, and a tiny bit of DC there at the end. Yeah, about that. Huh? Yeah. It's nice that they do this also because these guys, they're getting older. Some of them aren't with us anymore. And these books become even greater treasure of like, at yes. least somebody got to sit down and really talk to them and get, get, get this on record. And, and, and all of the interviews are, are really well done. Uh, and and they, they delve into all different aspects of what they were doing. They're just really fabulous books. I, I would say this to people too. If you go to a show and tomorrow's a set up, go check out their table because yeah. the volume yes. of stuff that they've done, like we could, the three of us, not name all of it right Jim now. Jim Kirby no, Treasury, yes. like 50, 60 of those. Yes. I mean, and, yeah, and, that, and that's that's how they got put on my radar. Yeah, that's how probably I first learned about them. Was that their first uh, publication? I would be surprised because that's a big undertaking. I bet they had a little publishing under their belt, but that's the one that was like it changed everything for me because you got to see all the Kirby pencils and yes. stuff like that. Right, those books are amazing, and I don't think we've looked at a Kirby collector issue. Yeah, no, like and and I. I also, I don't know if we can look at one without Tom here. Right, right, right. <laughs> my first one was the one where Starenko inked the cover, and it was that uh, stuntman character. Uh, magazine format mm -hmm. before they started yeah. to get big. They were hard to find, man. And and these books, just so you know, the hardbacks you can't find these anymore. But I think that the paperbacks versions of these books are still in print. Ready, ready to check out Jazzy John's uh, sketch. Nice, nice, yeah. <laughs> so tight. Yes. yes. You know, I had it's wanted... good paper too to to like get a little little noise on the you page. You can see side of the pencil too. Let's let's shade that hair nicely. I, I I remember on this one, I, I think Green Goblin was first and Spidey was second or something like that. And um, as much as I like Mary Jane, it was like, okay, I'll take this. It's, you know, incredibly well done. I get I get the vibes that, that like, he would, he's, he's more attuned to drawing this kind of thing. Like, Green Goblin, good luck. There's a little complication to that. But, like, uh, he, drawing these chicks, beautiful people, second nature. Yeah, to him. I, I think of him that way as romance comics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. What in his old? Uh, I got a gang of his uh, early, timely like Captain Americas, deep Kniff style. Yeah, on that work, man, very much inspired. Inspired, but like George Wonder, really, you know, like that type of uh, Kniff, totally uh, watered down. And Ramita was another one who worked for a really <laughs> long time. You guys that commission. These old timers to be doing these fucking naked things. You guys are fucking weirdos, man. I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, but like this is a nice old man, and because you know that's what it is. Right. It's some commission from some guy who's going to take that home to jerk off to. And th this is all the '50s. Yeah. Captain America, commie smasher. That's the stuff I'm talking, man. Yeah. Like uh, none of these. Well, maybe that a little bit. You see the kniff and that a touch, but when you see just the kind of the basic, him going through the motions. Yeah. You see the Kniff yeah, sure. all no, over no the place. Sickles, kniff, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Kniff's definitely DNA of like uh, that, that that whole generation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was he was a huge influence all the way around. This is fun to be able to see some of the, the roughs and stuff. Yeah, these are the Pencils. Sundays, man, and and I think there's an artist edition of his Sundays. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I didn't yeah. know that. Either. Or 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 the strips, it's maybe Sundays included. Yeah, rest in peace, man. We just lost him. Yeah. Yeah, I think they did... I think it's Tomorrow's did one that's a uh, Ramita Jr. and uh, Senior. And I think Spurgeon may have been a, one of the creatives on it, mm. one of the writers, but it's a big interview with both of them. And I think it is Tomorrow's. Well, there was the comic art magazine that John B. Cook did that I think uh, Tomorrow's took over, whereas the flip, where like the one side is the Cuberts with the Joe and the Sons. And the other flip was uh, the Ramitas. Boy, it's great to see. I, I remember us looking at this issue. That inking is so wild. Yeah. Man, it just looks like a pen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, you see it kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Creating that haze. Yeah, these are, you know, what more can I say? These are great books, straight down the line. And then you realize, like, the imprint that John Ramita had on us is way deeper than... We we realized because like it was his Spider Man that was on all the the underoos and and all right. the tchotchkes and shit that we were buying as kids the coloring books and stuff. Hundred percent. It yeah. was all like this Spider Man. It wasn't Ditko. Like D Ditko comes later for like our generation. 
There's um, one of the things that I that I found in that 1986 zine was he did the Comic Con program cover in 1986. You know, it's all these Marvel yeah. characters, and that's it. Like those are the Marvel characters that we know because yeah. he was kind of the the designer of those characters. The star brand and and if you <laughs> right and, and if you look at this and then look at Sal Buscema's stuff, you can see that there was a house style. Oh, 100. percent I actually think the loss of the house style is something that has hurt the uh, Marvel DC comics. Yeah. I agree. And it's ironic because I think the art's probably better without the house style restraints, but I think it hurts the overall product. Next time Brian Moss comes over, man, he's going to make the argument for the Electric Company Spidey comics. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the run and, and sings their praises. That's great. All right, so so Joe Sino, now, uh, and I said this before when, when we did the Galactus episode, he was my favorite Kirby inker to me, sure. bar none. Sure. Now, what... What I didn't know, because I, I just recently reread this, was Sinnott's, um own art besides Kirby and how wh what a great artist he was in and of his own talent. So that, that was one of the big revelations, and I was very happy to get Dr. Doom. That is sexy. Man, so tight. Very happy to get Dr. Doom. I love looking at these guys' pencil drawings, like the way the line... I like, thought it was it, inked at first. It, it's amazing seeing He's that. He's got such a tight style. Uh, so who were some of the... Uh, ones that you asked for. Well, actually, Dr. Zoom was my number one. Uh -huh. Okay, so, you know, anybody after that, it really didn't matter. I think I, I, think I asked for The Thing and maybe that makes one, sense. you know, but Dr. Doom was it. Maybe I asked for The Watcher now that I think of it, but... That would have been a weird drawing, just like a bald <laughs> Yeah, with a big old <laughs> cranium. But it, it's very interesting going through this and see all the advertising work he did and the humor comics that he did and, um, uh, it's it's interesting to see his work without him being on top of somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And yeah. he was really, really good. He had all those chops, you know, like he could draw those accurate figures and, and uh, you know, tell some stories. But it, it sort of, it was of that kind of almost DC tradition where like those old guys, they lacked imagination really. Like he yeah. could draw the stuff, right. but it didn't have that, that, it didn't have this. Yeah, yeah. And and there was something about the two of them together, and you can see you know his commercial stuff that he was doing, and he was really good. That's amazing. Yeah, this would be an amazing piece to see with all the paste ups and and uh, the color holds and stuff. An another great book, and like I said, I was very happy to get Doctor Doom. That that made me. It's nice to see it on the slick paper. Yeah, because his line work. It's Needles. so crisp. Yes, it's so crisp. Sharp as a needle, baby. Yeah, wait a minute. You know, look look at this panel here. This is like Virgil Finley stuff. Yeah, That's it gorgeous. is. Yeah, it is. You know, Oofa. there's so much of the white, the stars. I always think like splatter, but you look closely at that, and it almost looks like he's drawn. Yeah, it's a, it's a hatching. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's like a hatching. There is some weight on top of it. Uh, mileage may vary depending on his pencilers sometimes. Man, he's being a little faithful with uh, this stuff. It looks kind of boring, but... He's doing what he can with. Yeah, see, he did he did uh, strips also, and th this is very Rip Kirby. Yeah, um, that that Connecticut school of yeah, uh, artograph projector. Exactly, Ben Casey, little duotone. Always f fan of uh, duo shade paper. Yeah, it's a really good sample, I think, here of tomorrow's. Um, I saw one Classic. of the King K Fabers who's watching us as we record this commented on like there's a big digital component to the tomorrow stuff because the stuff goes out of print yeah but there are ways to see this you yes. know if you missed out on the book but you saw something on this video or even if not go check out what they have available because it's quite a library yeah that's how that's how i have the kirby collectors yeah, yeah. digitally because uh they just that's three bookshelves yeah, yeah yeah they don't show up like on the on the racks you know and 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 this is nice Mm -hmm. With all the stuff that he did, yeah, uh, I don't think that that was in the other ones. Pretty sweet. Oh, look, the Beatles. Yeah, what's that from? Because I, I think Marvel? it's. Uh, wonder if that was a tryout book or something for that Beatles book. Look at that. Because it did, ends up being Tom Palmer does. Tom Shirley Publications, part. man. He did a little ink piece in. Uh, wow, that's t cool. Tom would get guys like Ron Friends and Brett Breeding and yeah, to to do some some shit. I always liked if you'd see like Sinnott in inking Ron Friends. That usually worked pretty nice. Loved it, loved it. That, that was that was my era of uh, of Thor. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful stuff, man. So that's my, you know, the, these are some of the some of my prized possessions. Yeah, yeah. So cool that that uh, 
Those old guys, you know, they still got it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for bringing these on by, Uncle Warren. It's my pleasure. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We're a daily YouTube channel, and we've got about 1,500 videos out there. We might have talked about your faves. Uh, if we did not, you have to let us know in the comments so that we can push those books higher on our to-read piles. Uh, the way that uh, you could do that is by hitting that little magnifying glass on the front page. Search for your favorites. If uh, we talked about your favorites, check out those those uh, videos. We have a Patreon where uh, the King of Kayfabers on the Patreon get to see all these videos and recording sessions before anybody else, uh, thus mitigating the Kayfabe effect. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and it's going to be a big holiday season at the uh, from the Kayfabe offices to your house this uh, 2023 season, starting with the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, 504 pages, 140 pages plus of material that is not in those first four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, and uh, it is the 10 year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of hip hop as a culture, so it, this is the best book that I've made to date, and I really hope you add it to your bookshelves this holiday season. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback is coming to you this holiday season collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Some of these volumes are out of print. The current focus has been Red Room over the past couple of years. There are two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there right now. We've just wrapped up the Crypto Killers miniseries and uh, in January make sure you take your uh, Christmas and Hanukkah loot, save up, save up uh, 20 bucks and grab uh, Crypto Killers, the third trilogy in uh, the third trade paperback in this trilogy of outlaw splatterpunk gore comics that I have brought to you. Jimmy, let the people know what you got going on. The next thing I need you guys to do, pre-order Street Angel Princess of Poverty at your local comic book shop. The book will be out in November. It collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadliest Girl Alive. Also, back in print and available from Image Comics. These two are designed to be a set on your shelf. So pre-order Princess of Poverty next time you hit the comic shop. And uh, don't, don't miss out. This is how Image knows how many to print. I've also been self-publishing lately. You see here the BW zine, a collection of panels and artwork from the black and white explosion of the 80s that I love so much. The 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history. And True Crime Funnies, a collection of non-fiction stories, uh, loosely with a crime in there somewhere, a couple wrestling yarns. These will all be available on my website, jimrug.com, October 26th. I'm going to have a big holiday fall sale, so uh, mark that on your calendars because there are limited quantities of everything, but I will be listing all kinds of stuff, so check that out, October 26th, jimrug.com. And if you haven't picked up the Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition yet, you see it there on the screen, one of the best books I've ever made, Fluorescent Green. You can't miss it if your store has a copy. These are sold out at the distribution level, so if there's one in your comic shop or you haven't picked one up yet, pick it up now. Reward those comic shops for taking a chance and carrying our work. I don't want any shop stuck with this whenever 2024 <laughs> rolls around. It's a perfect gift book for you or the Hulk fan in your life, so pick that one up at your local comic shop when you're pre-ordering Street Angel Princess of Poverty. Uncle Warren, thank you so much for sharing your collection with us. It's an honor. I love working with you guys and so happy to share this with the Cartoonist Kayfabe Nation. Yes, we got a lot of videos with Uncle Warren, so uh, go through our uh, filmography and uh, check a bunch of those out. Jimmy, tell the people a couple of the other ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, uh, fanny packs, stickers, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video in the show notes. There you have it. A bunch of good ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel and to keep these videos coming to you on a regular basis. Give them those final marching orders, Jimmy, and we're going to be on our way. Read more comics.